Hi guys, once again I find myself apologising for the lateness of this uh, video um, which is actually my weekly haul from last Wednesday which I think was the 26th of March um, again it's through no fault of my own it's because um, as well as the pickups that I get from my local comic shop there were some things that I've been waiting on from online retailers and as always I want to wait until I get everything together before um, I shoot the video so anyway that's the apologies without further ado um, this is my haul for last week starting with um, DC Comics and we have issue 29 of uh, The Dark Knight um, this is part 2 of the Man Bat story and it's also the very final issue of um, the Dark Knight series um, it's finished um, with a total of 29 issues uh, I've really enjoyed it I'm, I'm disappointed to see it go and I think maybe the reason is because obviously in well I think it's next week now the Batman Eternal weekly series is going to be beginning and maybe they just want, don't want to do like too many Bat titles um, so this is the one that's bit in the dust but there you go and then from the um, Vertigo imprint of DC, we've got issue 7 of The Wake um, by Scott Snyder. Uh, three more issues of this to go. Um, really good. And then moving on to Marvel, we've got issue 13 of The Trial of Jean Grey. Sorry, Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's part 6 of The Trial of Jean Grey story. Um, Unfortunately, I've not read any of that particular storyline because um, some of the issues are in other comics which I don't pick up. Um, I think three of them have come from Guardians of the Galaxy, but I'm not even sure whether it's worth me trying to follow the story if I'm not picking up the other issues. So maybe, you know, some of you guys who've read it, if you could let me know whether it's worth reading it. And then we've got issue 18 of Hawkeye which is a brilliant brilliant series absolutely loving it even with some of the crazy uh, release dates that have been going on recently with it and then we have issue 30 of Superior Spider-Man um, one issue left after this before we then go back to um, The Amazing Spider-Man I thought when I first picked this up it was a bit of a chunky book and I was thinking it was maybe like a double issue but they've actually included um, issue one of Black Widow from the new series in there. So that's good. And then I picked up issue one of Silver Surfer by Dan Slott, uh, art by Michael Allred. Um, this one I was going to pick up anyway um, because I wanted to add this particular cover to my collection of Scotty Young covers. But um, when I've read it I may decide to keep on with this because I am a big fan of Michael Allred's art um, I don't know what it is about it but I just I mean I loved his run on the FF um, and I just really love the artwork so um, I may continue with that then moving on to Independence um, got issue 124 of The Walking Dead um, as usual um, my issue comes signed by Charlie Adlard with the Infinity and Beyond Certificate of Authenticity. And then something that I don't normally pick up, um, but, um, well I'll tell you what it is, it's um, Cross Badlands from Avatar. Uh, and it's not a book that I normally pick up, but I was reading that um, Garth Ennis, who was the original writer on this book, was coming back to do an arc or a storyline which dealt with the um, initial outbreak of the crossed infection and how that actually came about and I thought that would be pretty interesting reading so I decided that I'm going to pick up um, the book for this particular um, story arc and if I enjoy it, I mean after that finishes I might even keep on with it anyway I was having a look at the, um, the covers that were going to be available and there were two of them that I particularly liked. I couldn't decide between them, so I thought, oh, to hell with it, I'm going to pick up both of them. So we've got the um, torture cover, um, which reminded me of a film. And I want to say Cabin in the Woods, 
um, which I think was the Eli Roth film. But I'm sure there was a similar scene in that where there was a woman shaving her legs and all of a sudden she was just covered in blood. But I could be wrong. I might be thinking of a dream I had, I'm not sure. Anyway, again, let me know if, if I'm right with that. And then, <coughs> excuse me, the other cover that I pick, picked up, and I think I'm going to continue with this particular range of covers for this run, and that's what's called the Fatal Fantasy um, cover, which is kind of a crazy warped version of the Red Riding Hood. Um, I, I really like this because I, I'm really, I'm really a big fan of fairy tales, and the whole kind of mixture of horror that's kind of contained within them because even though the kind of kid stories I mean some of them have got such horrific things in them and that kind of appeals to my what sense so anyway I like the cover and I, like I said I'm going to continue picking up this particular series of covers and then on to the uh, Grim Fairy Tales um, releases from uh, Xenoscope Publishing. There's the final issue of Quest, which I've mainly been collecting for the um, superb Jamie Tyndall covers. And I think this one is probably the best of them all. It's just absolutely breathtaking. So, anyway, I've got the full series of this now, and I think four of the covers are Jamie Tyndall ones. So I'm going to actually read it and see what the story is like on that. And then from the... Um, Wonderland series there's issue 2 of Clash of Queens and for this issue I plumped for the uh, cover from Johnny D. I've never been a particular fan of um, Johnny D's artwork or uh, Johnny De, De Jardin is his full name um, and whenever there's been um, a range of covers and his has been one of the alternatives it's one that's never appealed to me but I think this is quite a breathtaking cover and I particularly like the um, the reflection of the face and the blade of the knife there it just I just think it's really a great cover and then the final couple of things I picked up um, were things that I was planning to pick up from London Super Comic Con um, but I needed my money for other things um, such as sketch covers while I was there anyway I managed to pick them up from a place in space last week and they were quite a lot cheaper than they would have been if I'd bought them at the con. So I was really happy about that. So firstly there's the uh, Robin Hood Age of Darkness one shot. Which is the LSCC variant cover. Which is really cool. And then another of my favourite artists, cover artists, is um, Elias Chatzoudis. And he did a cover of Tales of Oz. Um, or Tales From Oz um, issue number two which again was the LSCC variant so I was really happy to get these as I thought I probably missed out not buying them at uh, LSCC so that's it for last week um, I've not got a very big haul this week but again I've got a couple of things that are going to be coming um, through the post so hopefully um, fingers crossed I'll get this week's haul up uh, over the weekend so anyway, uh, as always, um, like, dislike, um, feel free to comment and obviously subscribe if you want to. Thanks for watching guys, take it easy.